Arthur Morgan from the Hamilton Crop Circle. I just wanted to thank everyone from our past Kickstarter project. Uh, thanks to all your help, we were able to grow and get a lot of our projects going. But we need your help again. Uh, we have expanded many of our projects and we're growing. And what we've realized is that in order to become sustainable, we need to grow year round, we need to get some more land, and we need to expand our composting system. So we're asking for your help again. So if you could, please spread the word as much as you can. Uh, check out our videos on the blog and you'll see what we've done in the past. Uh, go to Facebook and you can communicate with us and let us know your thoughts. Uh, it's also easy to stay in touch that way to find out about volunteer days and what we're doing. Thanks a lot. So this is the office right here. And this was nothing but just storage, desks, chairs, all sorts of stuff. So we kind of cleared it out made a little bit of room, but you see there's not that much space and sometimes I'll have 20 or 30 kids. This is the boiler room. What I did this winter was bring all my uh, materials here and we started seeds, we had plants, we actually had fruit trees down here, we had figs this winter. So basically what we're trying to see is if we could put a greenhouse here uh, year round, then we'd have classroom space, we could grow food for the community, we could grow food for the shelters. The goal of getting the greenhouse on the back portion of the lot so that at least that area can be farmed um, continually throughout the year is uh, one that is important for us. We can teach math out here, we can teach any of the sciences, um, and certainly my class in the fine arts, we incorporate them into the outdoor space, and the kids love it. Kids, when they have something to focus on, especially where um, they feel like they're a part of, they do so well. Two years ago, this was parking lot. This was cars, this was asphalt, broken glass, fences. When children go around and say they see abandoned lots with trash on it, that does nothing for your spirit when you live in that neighborhood all the time. All that does is just drag you down and make you feel as if, well, let me contribute to that. So when they come out there and they see in a green space, they want to contribute to that. The kids that are working in the garden, um, whether they're producing vegetables or just doing some of the more beautification work, they are taking additional pride in the school, which means that um, things like vandalism are virtually non-existent here. It's amazing to see inner city kids excited about an outdoor space where there is real fresh food. A lot of times you'd be surprised kids have never um, picked a fresh vegetable before. They, some of them have never even been in a garden with um, fresh vegetables and fruit. So it's just amazing to see their excitement, and just to get excited about real food. This is Baltimore City urban farming at schools. This isn't, we're not out taking a field trip for an hour a week or an hour a month and just seeing how people are doing it. We're doing whatever we can to make it work for us here in the city. What we're trying to do is actually build our own garden at the farmer's market. It will extend our season so that we can grow for the restaurants, the community, uh, the shelters. And basically what we're trying to do is in this space, on what's actually is a vacant lot that they let us have the market on, let's put our hoop house right here. Greenhouses, and hoop houses, high tunnels, they're all a huge piece to this puzzle. If we're going to be serious about local food, we have to be serious about canning and processing. If we're going to be serious about local food through those cold months, we're going to have to be serious about those kind of structures. Knowing our farmers, knowing where our food comes from, and when you can drive four miles or five miles across town and see the operation, the product, the way things are harvested, packed, delivered, we literally get lettuce mix picked 6 a.m. and it's on our counter when we open the doors at 9. Well, no, obviously, there's a barren time, you know, in the winter. Um, you can only sell so many turnips and beets and greens, so ideally th there would be people who can grow in hoop houses or hot houses and, you know, prolong the season. It would be great for this business to be connected to a farm right across the street from us in an urban setting. You can look at it in an entirely different way. I think there's an obligation to think about what impact the decisions you make about operating that restaurant have on your community beyond what am I going to serve?